So why did I choose France as a country to move to? And why did I choose this region of France? Well, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to tell you why. And I'm also going to share with you some things you should consider when you are selecting a country and a city to move to. Now, if you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you. If you have not yet, please consider doing so and clicking that notification bell so that each time I upload a video about moving abroad, living in France, or finding the confidence and courage to live life on your terms, you'll be notified. My name is Patricia Brooks, and about four and a half years ago, I left my job and I moved to the south of France. And I chose to live initially in the city called Perpignan. So why? Why France? Why Perpignan? Well, um, back in 2014, I started solo traveling. And the first place I traveled to was Quebec City, Canada. And I chose there because I remember going there as a child with my family. And I remember they spoke French. And I remember how quaint Quebec City was. And so that's where I chose to go. But I wanted to speak French to the locals. So I dusted off my high school and college French. Uh, six weeks later, after listening to Pimsleur Method and working through six weeks of lessons, I boarded a plane, got off the plane, said bonjour, and the locals greeted me. And they thought that I spoke French. My bonjour was pretty good, I guess. And that really encouraged me to want to continue to learn the language. I would go back to Canada three more times. And during those visits, I got this seed of a dream that maybe I could live in a French speaking country and become fluent in French because I had fallen in love with the language. And I considered Canada, but what turned me away from Canada were the winters. I am not a cold weather girl at all. I don't tolerate it well. So that took Canada off the map. However, I knew that in France they speak French and that maybe I want to go visit there and see if I could see myself living there. And so that's what I did in 2015. I came to France for the first time. I visited Paris. I visited Aix-en-Provence. And what I found out was that I could see myself living in France, but just not those two cities. And in 2016, I came back for uh, my first scouting trip to find the place that felt like home to me. Now, if I had known myself a little bit better, I would have not visited the places that I visited because I am not a big city girl. <laughs> uh, but the places on my list were bigger cities. And not that it was wrong for me to do that. I, I got, got to know and understand what felt right to me and what didn't. But had I had a list of questions, uh, and answer those, I might have chosen different places to visit. But anyway, my first stop uh, on this two-week scouting trip was to Toulouse. And Toulouse is a wonderful city, but it's just not my city. While I was there, however, I was reading in a guidebook about the city of Perpignan. It had a beautiful picture of Centreville, and it also spoke about how Salvador Dali called the train station there the center of the world. And I was like, hmm, I want to see this. And so I went on a day trip from Toulouse to Perpignan, about a two-hour train ride, to check it out. And it was a chilly, drizzly, gray day in May. Not beautiful weather at all. And when I got to the train station, I was unimpressed. It was just a normal train station. However, when I started walking down the palm tree line street that... Um, is right in front of the train station, I felt something, you know, the, the drizzle was hitting me in the face. It was chilly, but I had this overwhelming feeling of freedom. It felt really good to me. And I stopped and I looked up at one of these spindly palm trees and I asked myself, where am I? You know, this, could this be my new home? And so I started exploring. Now it was a Sunday, so everything was closed. I didn't recognize that as, you know, being my second trip to Europe. However, um, it felt good to me and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I went back to Toulouse and on to Lyon and I couldn't stop thinking about Perpignan. So I came back 
uh, for two or three more days to get a sense of whether what I felt was real. And so that's why I settled on Perpignan. It was in France, so I could learn to speak French, and it felt good to me, right? So those were the two reasons. Now, I only stayed in Perpignan for my first year. And people ask me, well, why didn't you stay there longer? You know, you said it was the place for you. Well, it was, and it was for that first year. However, I was uh, living in a neighborhood near the train station, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't the neighborhood I wanted to live in forever. Uh, and so as I was exploring the city my first year on foot, I couldn't seem to find a neighborhood that felt good to me, right? I was like, no, nah, not this, but if it were like this. And so toward the end of my first year, knowing that I would need to have another address for my next visa, I decided to expand my search to villages outside of Perpignan. And I visited a couple that just didn't speak to me at all. And I remember having come to my village, Sarre, uh, way back in early on in my first year. And I remember them having this really neat a Saturday market and there were a lot of people and a lot of things you could buy and there were cafes open. It just felt pretty vibrant. And so I came back to check it out to see if perhaps this was the village for me. And I thought, yeah, I think it could be. There was not that that overwhelming feeling that I had in Perpignan, but it felt good enough. So um, I tried it and that this is where I have been and it's been a good choice. Now, in selecting, you know, going further out, I had a choice. I could have gone closer to the Mediterranean Sea um, and be around water, or I could go closer to the Pyrenees Mountains, which is what I did. I am an earth sign. I'm a Capricorn. So uh, the mountains really feel pretty solid and grounding to me. So um, I think it was a good choice. So that is why I chose France, why I chose the two places in France to live. Now, there are some cons to having moved out of a larger city, as well as some pros, and I'm going to run down those for you. So the first con is that I'm not on the train line, um, and there's no airport here. So if I want to travel, I have to go into Perpignan to catch the train or uh, a flight from Perpignan. Or if there's not a flight that leaves from Perpignan, I need to either go to Barcelona, which is about an hour and a half from here, or I need to take the train up to Paris, which is about a five hour train ride. So it's not the most convenient if I want to travel by train or plane, but I'm willing to give that up because it feels good to live here. The second con is stores, right? I have everything that I could want here. I can walk to or take the bus to or drive to stores locally to get what I need. But sometimes you want to go to a department store or a specialty store. And in that case, I'm going to have to go into Perpignan for that. There's not a music store here. There is um, not a department store here. And like some of the bigger chain stores like Auchan, which is similar to a Walmart, um, I have to go into the city. Not a big deal. I can get there by bus. I can take my car. But it is less convenient than when I was living in Perpignan. The next con is that I have to go into the city if I want to do administrative tasks. Uh, if I need to renew my visa or things like that, I have to go to the prefecture there. Now, there's a, a sous-prefecture here, uh, but I've never been able to do anything there. I don't know what they do there. So it's nice that it's here, but it would be nicer if I could transact business there. It's a small village. And so everybody knows everybody and everybody knows everybody's business. Uh, last year, I was dating for a couple of dates, um, a man who was born and raised here. So he knew everybody and everybody knew him. And one day I was on my morning walk and I saw him sitting uh, on a bench next to the mairie and with his friends. And I was thinking, oh, I wonder what he's talking about. Uh, I wonder if he's pointing me out. And it felt a little bit uncomfortable. So uh, being in a smaller place or a smaller town um, has that as a drawback. 
finally, I'm going to put this on the con list, although I don't feel like I'm missing a, out on a lot here where I am. And this is fewer cultural events and activities. Now, it's true that Perpignan has more venues and more concerts and more restaurants and more museums than uh, an 8,000 person village would have. However, we've got a lot. <laughs> we've got a museum. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of museums. We've got um, nice restaurants and cafes. We've got, in the summertime, we've got concerts galore. In fact, two weeks ago, we had a jazz festival of four uh, jazz nights, and I went to one of those concerts, and it was amazing. Two weeks before that, we had, uh, I think what they call Les Déferlantes, uh, which is a big musical festival here in France, and they had it here, right? So there is always something going on, especially in the summertime. So I don't feel like I'm missing out on the, the cultural activities, um, but of course there are more in a bigger city. So those are the cons. Moving on to the pros. The pros, I'm going to start off with the con from the last list cultural events and activities. There are a lot here. Now, not every small village is like this. If you go one village to the east or one village to the left, uh, at west of where I am, um, it's pretty dead. Um, not a lot going on. So if you're considering moving to a smaller village, you need to understand what, uh, what kind of energy is there and what kind of activity, cultural activities um, are going on there and when they happen. All right. Another pro of living here is that I am closer to the mountains. As I said, I am an earth sign. The mountains feel grounding to me. I can go, you know, seven minutes from my apartment and be on a nature trail listening to a babbling brook. It's just simply amazing. <laughs> Another pro, kind of, is that it can be quieter here. Now, I know that city dwellers who come to visit the country and smaller villages have complained in the past about the noise of, of the countryside. The um, roosters <laughs> cock-a-doodle-doing <laughs> in the morning and the church bells chiming you know, things that are, that you hear because it's a little bit quieter here, right? And that we have roosters. <laughs> um, and I remember a couple years ago, there was a mayor who was in the news who had posted a sign at the entrance of his village that said, if you don't like, you know, church bells and, and roosters crowing and all the other, oh, the, the, bell, the, the bells of cows clanking, then, you know, this is not the place for you. Go home. <laughs> I will say, however, if you are closer to Centreville um, of, of a smaller village, it may not be as quiet as you might want it to be because there are street sweepers and their garbage collection. And, you know, sometimes there's traffic. Um, motorcycles is another thing that I hear quite often. So it can be quieter um, and it depends. <laughs> Another pro of having moved to this village that I'm in is that while I chose to be closer to the mountains, I am not that far from the sea. I am about a 40 minute car ride from the Mediterranean. So I kind of have the best of both worlds. And so that's a pro. And finally, I am closer to Spain than I was when I was living in Perpignan. I'm about 15 minutes from the Spanish border. Now, Perpignan, I was probably closer to about 30 or 35 minutes from the Spanish border. Not a huge deal, but I'm claiming that as a pro because I'm closer. <laughs> now, what should you consider when you are trying to find the country and the city you want to move to? Well, I think, you know, starting out with some of the things I've already mentioned in this, in this video, you know, how does the place make you feel? Does it feel good to you or not? Every place has its own energy. And I think that energy matters. The second is, you know, what language do you want to speak? If you know that you don't want to learn a new language and English is your primary language, then you are going to limit yourself to English speaking countries. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that helps you to narrow down your focus on what countries you could move to. On the other hand, if you know that you want to learn French and become fluent in French, then a French speaking country 
or region of a country could be a place for you and that will help you narrow your focus as well. Um, another thing is you want to consider is are you do you really like to be near the water or you, you like to be closer to the mountains or does it just not matter? Um, I think climate is another huge one. As I said, I did not cho choose Canada because of the winters and I chose the south of France because it's warmer, right? It's hot in the summer, which maybe is a little bit too hot, um, but in the wintertime, the te temperatures don't get too cold. So that, that was important to me as well. And the other thing you want to consider is if you are moving to a foreign country to be closer to other countries to travel to, you're going to use that your, your new place, your new home um, as a home base to travel from, you're going to want to be in a place that is not too far from an airport or the train. As I said, you know, for me, it's a little bit inconvenient to, to do a little bit of traveling, but you know, I'm not traveling every other month, so it's okay for me. But it's something you should consider if that is what you are thinking of. Now, I'm going to put a link to my where should I relocate questionnaire that has a lot of good questions for you to think about as you are considering a country and a city to move to. And there are things that you might not normally think of. So you definitely want to download this and take the time to answer the questions so you can get clearer on your criteria and really help to narrow down your focus because that will help you to feel more confident about your decision and feel less overwhelmed about, well, I could move anywhere. All right. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description. Now, if you are seriously considering a move abroad and would like to talk through where you are, where you want to be, what might be holding you back. Um, and if maybe working with me might help you get there sooner, then let's have a conversation. I'm going to put a link to my calendar in the description where you can find time for us to talk and figure some things out. Now that is all I have for you today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.